What's going on YouTube? OCD3DC here and what I got for your face balls today is a multi-tool dual times four ish. So hey you bring a crew to a dual. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So dual not in the numerical sense, but in the fighting sense. So I got my wife sitting here with me. Uh say hello. Hello. <laughs> All right, so what we got, we have four multi-tools here, and I think these are fairly popular ones. Um, two of these, the two in the middle, I've had for quite some time. The two on the outsides are, um, this one is newer to me, uh, but it was used. And this one is relatively new. Um, I've only had it, well, I've had it for about a month. So uh, we're going to talk about kind of the features that each one of these are bringing to the table and just kind of the overall quality of them and and uh, what what they have going on so first up um, this is just how they they come uh, with the cases so we'll talk about the one that doesn't come with the carry pouch this is the SOG switch plier is what this is called and this thing comes with uh they they advertise it as 12 tools um but they have things like you know a graduated ruler on the handle you know not something that you're really at least in my everyday life that's not something i'm really using you know if i need a measuring stick i'm grabbing an actual tape measure or yeah, something usually measuring more than just a couple inches yeah yeah so i mean yes it does have uh graduations on there you know a measuring stick uh this one does have uh metric it's centimeters on one side inches on the other but again i mean that's really kind of a novelty this tool is really kind of a novelty all the way around honestly it, it does work well but i'll show you why it's kind of a novelty is for that right there so it is kind of cool, uh, but this tool is mainly focused around the pliers. You know, most multi-tools are focused around the pliers, but this one even more so. Uh, so that's really its main trick, if you will, um, is this, uh, you know, side opening automatic switch plier. Uh, but the pliers do work well. Uh, it's relatively compact. So... You know, it does come with a pocket clip as well, and it works well. I've actually had this tool for, for several years. I've used it a lot, um, and it does work well. If you're looking mainly for a set of pliers, and then every so often you might need one of the other tools in there, it's not a bad option, and it's relatively cheap. Uh, so you can purchase this one right now. I checked prices uh, just before doing this video. This one right now you can buy on Blade HQ for $49.95. And, and I think that's a, a pretty reasonable price for what you're getting. Uh, you know, it's of reasonable quality. I mean, it's all stamped steel parts. Um, fit and finish isn't the absolute greatest, but it's also 50 bucks. Um, and hey, if you just need to ply or something in a hurry. Yeah. One boom. Of the, there you go. One of the things that I really enjoy about this is the pliers are spring loaded which I think that is really one of the best features about this. None of the other uh, multi-tools that we're going to show here today have spring-loaded pliers, so that's actually a really nice feature here. And the pliers are decent. Um, you know, they you can, you can get pretty good torque on stuff. The clamping pressure on them seems to be reasonable, and it's built strong enough. You can see it's pretty dirty up in there. Like I said, I've had this one for a long time. Uh, but, but it's, it's reasonable, you know, I think, I think it's, it's decent. Uh, Can you really crank down on something with how thin this material there is? Yeah, yeah, I, and I have really yeah. cranked down on stuff with it. Uh, the frame, you know, certainly isn't, isn't nearly as strong as, a, as some of the others we're going to get to, uh, but it's strong enough for what this tool is. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the other uh, tools here, all of them you have to access from inside uh, the handle. So you have to lift this side up and then you can uh, pull out each one of these other tools. And I'll show you real quick what all the tools are. So you, of course, have a file uh, that has different... Uh, uh, Coarseness. Yeah, there you go. And it does have like a, 
a screwdriver tip that's ground down on the end. Then you have this uh, partially serrated uh, blade. You also have this combination uh, can op or bottle opener and flat tip screwdriver. Uh, let's get the pliers out real quick. Your big fingers have trouble with that. Yeah. Yeah, my big fingers have trouble with all of these. So with that's everything. just that's yeah. just across it's the just, board. Okay. So you've got uh, the uh, bottle opener, flat tip screwdriver. You've got the can opener and smaller flat tip screwdriver. And then you have the awl. And you actually get a number two Phillips here that's a full size Phillips, which is nice. Um, you know, it's not one of the flat ones. Uh, so that's, that's actually pretty nice. However... You know, let's, we'll get the screwdriver out here. Uh, and all the tools do lock, by the way. So they have individual lock bars on each one of them. Uh, so when they're fully extended, uh, you do have to, have to uh, release a lock to get them to close. Do they expect people to do a lot of drinking and tooling? <laughs> yeah. Pretty, yeah. I mean, can opener, bottle opener is just like on every single one of these. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just mandatory it seems like i don't know most things are twist off tops and i have a finger to open again <laughs> yeah so you know the screwdriver here it's a little bit cumbersome you know just to fiddle with all this to get the tools out now this one because it tapers down like this uh it's kind of nice uh, so this one does work okay the screwdriver is centered on the tool which is a problem with some you know when it's offset and you're trying to drive a screw, it's just awkward. Uh, so this one actually works well for driving a screw. And then, you know, they have things like these little wire strippers and I stuff. I was going to say, what is that? Yeah, I'm going to move these stickers out of the way. By the way, if you guys want any stickers, uh, I have multiple designs. You can hit me up on Instagram or email in the description below. And I'll list all the names of these tools in the description as well. So if you want to look them up. But... Uh, you do get the nice screwdriver here, uh, but like I said, this one's really mostly about the pliers. Uh, otherwise, I'm, you know, I, I think the the quality is okay. And at, like I said, each tool does lock here, so you have to press down uh, here to lift the little lock bar to get the tool to fold up. So, is it just me, or and don't get me wrong, I like. A multi-tool. Uh -huh. There's lots of surprises inside. <laughs> yeah. But are they just generally novel? I mean, I guess when I need a tool, I just go grab that Well, tool. there there's certainly something to be said for having the right tool for the job. And anytime you're trying to incorporate a whole bunch of things into one tool, you're going to make sacrifices. You yes. know, so none of the tools in here, the you know, even the pliers... You know, a, a standard pair of needle nose pliers is going to be nicer than this. Yeah. Uh, so is it? It's just better it, for EDC purposes. Yeah, it's just more have, of a convenience thing. You know, you're have not it. Going to have your tools with you. Right. Every second. Yeah. Have it in your glove box. I mean, when I'm at home in my workshop, I'm not grabbing this to do anything ever. Uh, this is more just when I'm out and about. Um, yeah, that's really what it's for. I think so, I've decided we should keep a multi-tool in the house because, you know, okay. sometimes I go to grab my tool that I need and it's not there because a child probably took it yeah, yeah. and didn't put it back. So, as you guys know, uh, SOG makes a ton of multi-tools. And so the SOG switch plier, that's the cheapest one on the table at 50 bucks, uh, And this here is the second cheapest and it is the SOG Power Lock. Uh, I think they've come out with a Power Lock 2 at this point. Um, I'm not super familiar with uh, SOG's entire lineup, but this is kind of a more of an old school multi-tool. It does come with a relatively nice uh, leather sheath. Um, you can see they're made in the USA. Put that puppy on your belt and you're ready to go. Yep, yep. You can strap that old girl right there on your belt. <laughs> uh, this is all the tools you have to access from the inside. So this one's not convenient at all. Uh, and it, all the tools do lock. So you can see the little lock 
uh, mechanism there. And this one's kind of claim to fame is this gear configuration. They say that you get better clamping force on the, the plier head uh, with this, the way that the, the gear mechanism works. It like compounds the torque. I don't know that it really makes much of a difference, honestly. Uh, this tool is just kind of cumbersome. Again, it's just not as well thought out as a, the others that we're going to get to. Uh, this one, because all the tools are on the inside, you have to open the pliers, and then in order to access the tools, you have to fold these things up. Um, you can take these off. Uh, they just pop off like this, but without these little covers, this is horribly uncomfortable uh, to grip in your hand, so I'll let you... If you're doing, doing work, son. Go, go ahead and plier those. Uh, mm -hmm. with those things mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. okay? Now Fire. We'll pop these off and do the same thing and see the difference that that made in the grip. No, that's terrible. It's terrible. I can't do work, son. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So these are really kind of mandatory, but they're also a pain in the ass yeah. because you got to flip them up out of the way to access the tools that are in the handle. So this is not... Uh, out of the multi-tools here... This one is per my personal uh, least favorite. I like the switch plier more than I like this setup. But um, this one does offer more tools. Uh, the SOG Power Lock, uh, it offers 18 tools. And, you know, again, you have some graduated uh, measurement markings down the handles, which I don't really consider that to be uh, much of a, you know, bonus. But as far oh. as the tools go... You, well, you can saw logs. You can saw logs. And we'll just go ahead and get all the stuff out here. Can I borrow that to go saw some logs after? Uh, sure. Uh, there is one real interesting uh, tool on here, which we'll talk about. Is that a scissors? Those are scissors, yes. So you've got a saw blade, uh, the awl, which is... I don't know who uses an awl. Uh, a flat blade screwdriver uh, slash, oh, it's a wire stripper. Uh, you get a full size number two uh, Phillips here as well, an actual number two, which is, that's a positive thing. But it'll be off center. Uh, yes, it, this one will be off center. Uh, and then you got the can opener and wire stripper and a file on this side. On the other side, you get the combination blade partially serrated. And this right here is actually a 3 8 driver for a socket, uh, which is pretty cool. So hmm. you can put any 3 8 socket uh, on this tool. Interesting. And, of course, the scissors. And the scissors are spring-loaded. Um, and then you also have the bottle opener slash uh, flat blade screwdriver. So those are your, your tool offerings there. Uh, the 3 8 driver for the the socket is is pretty cool so that's actually a fairly useful tool so if you happen to have sockets with you then you can use those yeah. oh no i forgot my yeah. socket wrench but i got my sockets right you mean your ratchet yeah <laughs> ratchet yep so classy uh, bougie ratchet <laughs> All right, so this is the SOG Power Lock. Again, 18 tools. Price on this thing as of today is about 75 bucks, depending on where you buy it. And like I said, not really my favorite. Uh, it does work, but it's just not super comfortable. Uh, it's relatively heavy. It's cumbersome. Uh, yeah, just isn't real high on my list for good multi-tool. Uh, and the quality here, it's all stamped steel. It just doesn't feel like the best quality. Um, so, yeah, just not a huge, huge fan of this. Uh, you do have some wire crimpers and stuff. This is actually, I think they call this the EOD. Uh, and these are like blast caps. Uh, but, yeah, nobody in the in the general public is really utilizing those tools. Uh, blast caps? Yeah, it's for a military thing oh. uh full-on operator status here uh but 
but the pliers are decent. The wire cutters work well, um, you know. And with these little guards on, it's not horribly uncomfortable. But again, it's just, it's not the best implementation of this kind of design. Yeah. Who really needs one more thing to move out of the way when you're using a multi-tool? Yeah, for sure. So, all right. So now we're going to get into something that, you know, price is going up for sure. But the tool is a lot more useful and and just really has kind of made these obsolete uh, you know when leatherman first came out uh leatherman was the inventor of the multi-tool or this kind of platform uh, plier based multi-tool and you know sog and victorinox and and several other companies have made multi-tools over the years there's a ton of imports and all kinds of stuff but leatherman is still kind of the champion in this uh, space and this model right here, oh. this model here is the Leatherman Charge. Uh, and this one has the optional bit kit, comes with this uh, leather and nylon or elastic uh, uh, sheath. And you do have a couple different options for carry here, which with the, the SOG, you only have uh, one option for carry. So, so the Leatherman has a little bit nicer sheath and you get a much more functional tool. So the number of tools that are actually in the unit itself, the SOG uh, power lock says 18 tools. The Leatherman charge also says 18 tools. However, you can see right off the bat, we've got a pretty significant difference in size. Mm -hmm. But the biggest difference about this is the tools the main tools you can access on the outside of the unit. So, Is that like a wire puller, too? Uh, no, it's a gut hook. Uh, you could use it as a wire stripper. It's a serrated blade. A gut hook? Yeah. So Who be hooking guts <laughs> up in here? <laughs> uh, this has a standard blade as well. And this one is the, the version that the blades are 154 cm. So this is kind of an upgraded version. But, you know, again, it's just kind of, you know, it's a little bit cumbersome. It's not as nice as just having a standard pocket knife. So even though this one is much more user-friendly as far as the knife goes, you know, you pull this thing out, unlike this one, you can just, you know, pull that out. Just need a quick knife. Just need a knife. Uh, so that's really functional, and that, that part's great. It, where, as with this tool, you have to open the tool and then look... And I opened the wrong side, and so here... Which is going to happen every time. <laughs> of course. And and there's your knife. Oh, and I got the, the bottle opener with it, you know? So, and then once you have your knife out... Let me... One other thing that I dislike about this tool. So, once you have your knife out, and now you're all set up. So, in order to use the knife, you got to close it. And now the knife blade, the cutting edge, is on the op the wrong handle. So you see the offset there? Mm -hmm. So what you're cutting, you know, you can't cut down onto a, a cutting board, if you will. Mm -hmm. Where with this tool, the knife is in the correct position. Right. You know, so you're when you're not encumbered. Yeah. So definitely Leatherman, this is a way better uh, design tool, you know, from that standpoint, having the, the tools be accessible from the outside. Just a little more thinking, I think, went into it. For sure. And it's newer. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is an old design. Leatherman made this style uh, a long time. I think they even still make some like this. But mm -hmm. um, but all the, the blades here, so you've got four different uh, tools that are on the outside. Uh, you've got... They're all liner locks, so you can see the little liners that you have to depress. So you have the saw, the standard straight blade, um, you have the serrated blade with the gut hook, and then you have this file, which is actually a very nice file. Um, it actually has diamond abrasive on one side, and then an actual, you know, standard kind of file on the opposite mm. side. Can I touch it? Yeah. So... Uh -huh. It's like a good nail file. Yeah, I could use that in a pinch. Yeah. And I personally have not done it, but I've heard of people using this to sharpen knives with. Oh. 
uh, which I'm sure would work just fine because it's, I mean, it's a diamond abrasive. I'm, it's small, but, but, uh, and then they also call this a metal saw because uh, you've got teeth along the edge there. I was wondering, it looked like fuzzy yeah. down there. Yeah, there's stuff stuck on it, but, but, um, you know, it's, uh, having access to these four tools on the exterior is really nice. Yes, uh, that is very nice. And, and they're of good quality, you know, good b materials. And so then when you go ahead and open the tool up, again, you can see we've got measuring stick here, which, like I said, it's not really that uh, amazing to me. But right here at this point, uh, there's you kind of have to lock the handles in place. Mm -hmm. And now... Uh, the tool, you know, it feels solid, it's comfortable in hand, um, it, but it doesn't just fall open. Mm. Uh, there's some tension in the, the pivot here. You like yours to fall open? Yeah, I think, I, especially with a multi-tool, just because it's not, you know, it's almost two-handed. Uh, right, to, it's not like you can just flick it with a finger. Yeah, I mean, you can do it, but it's just, I don't know, it's just a little different. Yeah. Um, and uh, there are other Leatherman models that, that aren't so stiff. Um, I really thought this one would kind of work out of this, but it just hasn't. Uh, so, and like lube I said, it it's, yeah, it's not a lube issue. Oh, um, dang. But it's just, um, I mean, it's very tight. You know, there's no play in it or anything like that, which is great. And it might get better over time. Um, I haven't been using it a ton but a little bit, and it really hasn't changed at all. So here, you try. Can I ask you a question? See. Sure. Oh, yeah, she's stiff. She's stiff. Um, have you ever used a saw on a multi-tool? Uh, not for any sort of, uh, um, yeah, yes, I have actually. For what? Uh, just taking off a little branch here and there. Yeah? Like out in the woods, Yeah. Couple times hunting, you know, just I just cut wanted a branch to know off. if anybody's actually ever used that. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's not you know, it's not common. It's yeah. not like it's something that I would do all the time. Uh, but the teeth on them are super aggressive, so just to like take a small little branch off, it actually work quite well. Cut a switch. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, just in case your kids are not behaving on your hike. <laughs> that's right. So this tool. Um, you know, it does offer many tools on the inside. Uh, so you've got a, again, not super easy access for me. Um, but this, this particular tool has the uh, driver and the optional bit kit with it. So you've got these bits, and I cannot for the life of me remember what these are called. Uh, but there's a name for this style of bit because they're flat. They're not like a standard quarter-inch drive uh, bit. But you do have uh, multiple different bits, and you can buy a bunch of other sizes and stuff from Leatherman. So we've got, um, you know, Allen keys, uh, square drive, flat blade screwdriver, a couple different Torx bits. How do you feel about that Phillips? Will it strip a screw easy? Yeah, yeah, I'm not super... I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's again, okay. not it's, your ideal, right? It's not the best scenario, but it's okay. Yeah. Um, I honestly, when it comes, if, if we're talking just a number two Phillips, the round head in this tool or this one is actually better. Yeah. Um, so on this side, you have just the can opener and the driver. Uh, and then on the other side, you have another bit driver. And something you'll probably like is the glasses screwdriver. Oh, yeah. So this I is Yeah, I wear tiny, glasses, guys. I'm a dork. <laughs> tiny Phillips on this oh, side and a tiny... Oh, it's just a baby. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, so that actually is a, a useful tool for sure. Good um, to know. But you have to get, you know, deep inside the tool to get there. Yeah. Um, so, and you have this little thing that you can lose... Yeah. Which is a bummer. Uh, now there is a spring in there to hold it, but still, you know, still, it's a it's an yeah. issue. Uh, and these tools do lock out, so you've got this little lock bar right here. But like I was saying on the other tool, when you fold this up, 
the it's offset so it's not centered on the mm -hmm. tool so when you're trying to rotate you know if you're doing this phillips it's just a weird goofy yeah I, that'd be a bad combination of having that weird goofy offset along with a bit that's not the best when it comes to strippability <laughs> right so trying to drive that'd a screw tough. here is it's just it's just weird yeah I, it's just weird it's when just you do weird, that. It's just weird, guys. It's just weird. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, the overall... And we ain't about stripping screws in this house. No. Because no. I do it all the time and he gets mad at me. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't strip <laughs> screws here. Uh, but overall, you know, I think the construction of this, I, I still like this tool over something like this. No question. Um, this is still the better tool. The price is also significantly higher. So for a charge um, AL like this one here... Uh, you're looking at around 120 bucks, give or take. Uh, now, granted, this tool, uh, you know, the materials, the blade, you know, especially the knife blade, where this one's 154 cm, this one's, you know, probably, I don't, I, it's probably not even 8 cr. It's probably 7 cr. Crap. I, I, who knows? I don't even know what it is. But it's it's certainly not uh, all quality materials. Uh, the that Leatherman is quality material for that sure. That one's cuter too. The Leatherman. It just looks better. It's cuter. Yeah, I know. That really wasn't the right word. Okay, all um, right. It just it's more appealing to the eye. It looks sleeker, and um, I like the way that they incorporated the measuring. Okay. Tool yeah. Because being on the inside this, of the handle just kind of looks gaudy to me i don't know it looks silly oh on the outside yeah gotcha so just you know I, but just a thought i had so you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> so you know overall on the actual plier head um the leatherman pliers are a little bit nicer um a lot of the newer leathermans have changeable cutting uh uh inserts so you if you break one of the wire cutters in there that's you can nice. change yeah well, that's a nice feature uh but you know it's still focused around the plier but you got some other tools here so this one's certainly um more handy in a lot of different situations and the bit kit makes you know that exponentially better mm -hmm. uh but this one still does not utilize the bit kit in the best way um Yes, it gives you a lot more options, but with it not being centered, it's just kind of goofy and weird. It does work, but again, you're making some some sacrifices here. So, like I said, 120 bucks, roughly. Um, and this is an older model, so the so the current models will have a, you know a few different, like I said, the changeable cutting uh, cutters, mm -hmm. wire cutters. Uh, but overall, the platform is pretty similar to what you get today. Uh, and then that brings us to this guy. So I'm excited about this one. You're excited about it? Yeah, I mean, because I already know a little bit about it. Yeah. All right, guys. So this is the Victorinox uh, Swiss Tool Spirit Plus with Ratchet. Ratchet. So it all comes in this handy-dandy carrying case. Um, now, this one only offers a uh, belt carry in the standard way like the SOG uh, leather case does. Uh, but you got a lot going on in here. So this one advertises 30 tools in this setup. Uh, in the actual, just the Swiss tool itself, um, they advertise 20 tools it, compared to these two that both say 18, not counting the bit kit. Um, so just the standard tool, they say 18 tools for each of these. This one, they say 20. Uh, but then you have all these other accessories, which we'll get into that in a moment. Love them. So right off the bat, uh, you can access all of the tools from the outside on this thing. Uh, the only time you ever open this up is strictly for the pliers. So... All your tools are on the opposite side once you have the pliers out. Thinking. Yep. And uh, this slight bend in the handle, I mean, it looks a little weird in this position here. It almost looks like they didn't close all the way or something. Uh, mm -hmm. But when you have the pliers out, you tell me. 
how's that? How they should be. Compared to the other two. Yeah. Other I mean, three. that's just more realistic for a pair of pliers. If you were to grab a real set of pliers. Yes. Their handles would be like that. And that just feels. Right. They're just more comfortable. Right in the world. <laughs> yeah. The, everything about this tool is just a little bit more polished, a little bit more refined. Uh, it's a noticeable quality difference above the Leatherman. I feel uh, like we should be having champagne while talking about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, now feel the the actual plier action. Oh, yeah. That's the ticket. They're good. Yeah. They're real good. Yeah. And if y'all... No, may, maybe, no play right. or anything, uh, but just very, very solid, and the pliers just fall open uh, under its own weight, so... Yes, they're not spring. You know, they're not spring loaded, which I do like a, a spring loaded plier, uh, which is a, a nice feature. Mm -hmm. But uh, this, you know, you're getting a lot more functionality out of this than you are this, and uh, it's also a much higher price tag. Uh, but you know, no doubt the Leatherman is the champion here uh, as far as sales, um, different models, uh, Leatherman. Fuzzies. Has dominated this market for years and years. However, with all that being said, this tool right here, I was pretty shocked, honestly, when I got this thing in hand, uh, just how refined it is. It, it's, it exceeded my expectations. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of your, this is like your top of the line flagship model from Victorinox. Uh, it does not have the replaceable cutter heads like you get with the, the Leatherman. And honestly, that's the only thing that I would knock this on. Uh, and it's not that I don't trust these cutter heads. And Victorinox even says in their literature, uh, these are good to cut up to uh, 40 HRC wire, uh, which is certainly going to cover all your copper wire stuff, uh, aluminum wire, uh, you know, you start getting into some different types of steel wire, you may exceed that 40 HRC number uh, and damage those cutter uh, uh, blades in there. But but that's really the only thing here. And But Victorinox has an excellent warranty on this. So, you know, I, I don't, I can't speak to the warranty because I haven't used it, but they advertise a really good warranty. Mm -hmm. uh, the fit and finish on the plier head itself is excellent. Uh, it's a beaut. They, they have a small gap right up until the very edge, so they're almost like a set of tweezers that they make contact, the two jaws do, right at the very tip. So you can grab really, really fine stuff, uh, which, is, which is nice. Let me grab a little piece of paper here. So, you know, a good set of pliers will grab a hold of a piece of paper like that right there, and you can see how how uh distinct that line is where i was grabbing mm -hmm. and I, I haven't tried this with the others but the leatherman well, let's do that yeah the leatherman uh makes a nice uh edge as well so you can see right there so they they come to a really good point and they're consistent and ground well but let's see with the sogs if they're can do the same thing see mm. Um, that one actually, let's see if we can do another one. Yeah. I mean, it's grabbing the paper tight. So that one's still, that one's working pretty good. It actually surprised me. I didn't think those would line up that well. You can see these line, they, the jaws touch all the way down here. And sometimes that's a negative because the they don't actually touch at the tip. Mm -hmm. um, and then this tool here, this these pliers are pretty good on this thing as well. Yeah. Okay. So all of these are performing pretty well. I but that how severe that line is from the Victoria Knox. Yeah, just how crisp and clean it is. It just makes me, it brings joy to my heart. <laughs> yeah, these, the, the Victorinox pliers are really, really well done. I mean, when you get it in hand, you can just tell the quality here. The fit and finish on it's excellent. 
uh, no wiggle at all in these pliers. Uh, just really, really nicely done. So, all right, so let's get into the tools on this thing because it's got an impressive uh, suite of tools here. Whoa. Hmm. So, on, uh, Again, you've got locking tools, but instead of it being a push button locking scenario, you have like it's almost like an access lock that you have to pull the slide back to unlock the tools. Um, but you have uh, kind of some distinct uh, stops in the tool, and all of the tools, the pivot on them is just it's just nicer than the other tools. Uh, the rest of them. You know, when you pull one tool out, you get all the tools that are on that particular pivot. Uh, the Victoria Knox, out of all these, is the only one that doesn't do that. So if you want, you know, one tool, you want this tool, you pull it out, and that's the only one that comes out of the handle. The others don't come with it, which Huge. is... Huge. Yeah, I mean, pretty nice feature. So Because that's really annoying. Yeah, what yeah, is it is that annoying. fancy knife? Yeah, it's, I, I don't even remember what they call this thing, uh, but it's got multiple sharpened edges Interesting. Uh, doing several different things. So we'll go ahead and pull the tools out so you can see what all you get with this uh, multi-tool. A lot of these have nail nicks. Um, all right. Sawing down trees again. Yeah. But the saw is insanely sharp. Yeah. Uh, let me see Do here. you need some help? Maybe. Okay, it has fingernails. Let's just do that because it's easier. So, we got skizzers. Okay. Yep, that's everything. So... On this side over here, we've got, this is the combination serrated, and you've got a small portion of a short blade. And I'm pretty sure um, these are Sandvik steel, if I remember correctly what I was reading up on it. Um, definitely good good quality materials here with the Victorinox. And so you've got this, this is your, your main knife blade. So where with the Leatherman, you have two knife blades, a serrated and a plain edge. You do not have that over here. Uh, you get a combination edge. They do make a Swiss tool that has uh, one serrated and one plain edge blade. Plain edge blade. Uh, it's just not this particular model. Uh, I think in that model, you don't get the file, if I remember correctly. But that's neither here nor there. So... Uh, there just no, un, just know that there are other options. You get this combination blade that has multiple different kind of wire strippers and a sharpened like chisel edge. Um, you get this guy over here as a bottle opener, and I don't know what they're calling that little tool there, but it's a flat blade screwdriver. You also have an awl, um, and then the saw blade. Feel the saw blade; they're wicked sharp. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and then the file here, also a metal saw. You can feel that as well. I saw that. Feel the edge of it. Oh, no, no, me. no. Danger. Yeah, yeah they're, they're uh, sharp. Um, and then, of course, can opener with a smaller flat blade screwdriver. Uh, another, I don't know, pick or whatever you want to call this thing with a small flat blade screwdriver. And then on this one, you have, um, you know, it's more like a legitimate uh, number two Phillips. That's proper. And then also a pair of scissors that the quality is, everyone knows Victoria Knox does great scissors. So, and these are no exception. Uh, the spring on them is excellent. Everything about them is excellent. So all the tools accessible from the outside, um, which is the way I feel it should be. Mm -hmm. And only opening the tool for the pliers. And uh, you have the lock on all the tools which is great. And then there's a lot more to this as well. So we'll... Can't wait. Yeah. So the, the lock on these uh, works extremely well. Um, as you can see, the knife blade uh, has the correct orientation. Let's pull the knife blade out. 
this knife blade actually works extremely well. It's kind of goofy looking, but you know, it's in the right orientation so you can cut down on something. The serrations on here work really well. It's super thin behind the edge. Uh, so it's a very functional knife, even though it is kind of goofy looking. I mean, it kind of looks like a butter knife. Yeah, but when you're dealing with a multi-tool, you're worried about getting the job done in a pinch yep. rather than having long-term yep. perfection. So it doesn't say the steel on there. It just says Victorinox Swiss made stainless. I'm pretty sure, I, I can't, if they were 12C27 or 14C28N, but I'm pretty, it was one of the two, I'm pretty sure. So... Uh, but the lockup here is really good, better than all the rest of them uh, for a multi-tool. Uh, there's no blade play at all. Uh, with this thing, there's insane amounts of blade play. So it's just it's just a well-refined, just a really nice tool. And you've got these, uh, it's like a three-quarter stop right there. Um, Why? Why? Yeah. Uh, so you don't close it on your hands? Mm. Uh, it's pretty standard for a, a slip joint type affair. Mm, gotcha. Um, okay, so getting into more tools here. So first up, we have this thing. And this slides in right here, like so. And you have a corkscrew or a eyeball getter. <laughs> <laughs> and you have this Yuck. tiny little... Uh, glasses screwdriver now I do not think yeah I don't it's a it's a flat blade only so you it doesn't you know yeah flip over to a Phillips most of them are flat anyway yeah yep yeah all of mine are but that lives right there inside the the corkscrew which the corkscrew can uh, go into either side of the handle you have this little affair on both sides so I don't know if they make any other tools to fit in there, but this one only comes with the corkscrew. They gotta. Uh, you can see the sheath here has got multiple different uh, little Nooks. stowage <laughs> uh, areas. So let's go ahead and pull these out. It's my favorite time. Yeah, and this is a Velcro closure, which I, when I first got this, I was thinking I would rather have a snap. But the Velcro seems to work pretty well, um, and is you know it, it looks to be of good quality Velcro. So as long as it doesn't, you know, wear get out. wear out yeah. and get crappy over time, then I'd say it's fine. It's a BB ratchet time. It is. So so this tool, unlike the Leatherman bit kit, where you've got these little bit drivers that are off center, uh, with this particular multi tool you just straight up get a very functional uh, bit selection and driver. Um, and it's so functional that you even get an extension. So you can have an extension or you can have a longer ratchet. Um, but once you have this in, you know, you can uh, tighten and then you can just flip the ratchet over and then you're driving the other direction. Um, it comes with these uh, bits right here. However, uh, you can, you know, you have space here to put four of your own bits in there. And so it comes with a number three Phillips. It's got a number two Phillips inside the tool. And then you have, it looks to be, uh, that's a three millimeter Allen key. Uh, yes. And this was probably a five. Uh, no, four. Four millimeter. You got three and four millimeter Allen. Seems like a big jump. A number one uh, Phillips, a number three Phillips, and then a number uh, eight and a number ten uh, Torx. Oh, I'm sorry, no. Ten and fifteen Torx. So, so you know, a decent uh, bit selection here uh, is what it comes with. But like I said, you can... You can add, uh, you could actually add five more because you could have one in the tool, um, or six actually, because you could have one in the extension, one in here, and four in here, and it's made in a way that uh, you can have one bit in the ratchet when it's stowed. Let me show you here. So if I put one in the ratchet, 
it'll hold that in the the bit kit so so you could have one here you could have one in the extension and and then four more in here so so you could have you know several more bits that you add for your own personal uh you usage most often. but but the ratchet is fantastic this is i mean this just put it over the the top for me this is such a useful tool um you know it's standard quarter inch hex so you know these bits you can buy at any gas station uh you know anywhere sells this style bits uh, from my understanding these are really common and i think they were called is it jacob's bits or something i can't um, remember I don't know. I, i'm yeah i don't remember what this style of bit is called but uh, from my understanding these are really popular in canada uh, but you know here in the states certainly quarter inch hex uh, bits are definitely way way more commonplace so so you can find these bits anywhere and this little ratchet um, it's very finely toothed uh, so you don't have to move for those that don't understand what I'm saying there uh, Let me see if I can do this. So, you know imagine that you're trying to tighten or, or loosen a bolt or a screw and you don't have a lot of uh, Area to maneuver your ratchet back and forth here um, The teeth on the ratchet will determine how far you have to move to get to the next uh, tooth and in this particular situation I'll show you how far you have to move. So right there, I'm up against a tooth. Right there, it clicked. So, you know, I don't know what that is. Maybe five degrees or something. But it's it's very fine, uh, finely uh, toothed or milled. Um, the gear pattern on there is, is great. And... So it's got the little Victorinox logo right there, um, and it's a really small head on the ratchet, and the quality on it, like I said, is just, it's really fantastic. Uh, so in my opinion, if you're looking for a good multi-tool, uh, if, if the ratchet uh, and bit kit is something that you're after, the, this tool is leaps and bounds above anything else I've ever seen. Uh, they do offer this same multi-tool with different accessories. So you don't have to get the ratchet. You can get one that has, uh, I honestly I don't even remember what the other ones have. Uh, they, they do offer it in a couple of different uh, configurations though. So, so you can check them out. You don't have to get the ratchet. Um, you can get a few other accessories with it, but similar uh, sheath. But the, the actual Swiss tool portion of it is the, is the same. So, in Not your opinion, dollars, dollars. So you said dollars for everybody else. Yep, yep. So this one right here, the way it's configured with the ratchet set up, this one's one forty nine ninety five on oh. most websites. So uh -huh. it's about twenty twenty bucks more, twenty to twenty five dollars more than the equivalent Leatherman. I'd say well worth it. I would too. Um, in my opinion. Uh, compared to the Leatherman. The Leatherman's nice, and it's certainly a huge improvement over this. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that. But if the bits are important to you, uh, then I would say the Victorinox all the way. And if the bits are not important to you, and you're just comparing tool for tool, I would still say the Victorinox. Uh, the only thing that I like about the Leatherman tools, the, the current model, not this particular model, uh, but the current models is the changeable cutter heads. Uh, but I think these are good enough that I'm not too worried about that. And I, you know, Victorinox is a company that's been around forever. I, I don't imagine that you'll have any issues if you did have a warranty claim. I'm sure they'll stand behind it. Uh, so I'm just not that worried about it. And, yeah. and I, so I still like this tool more, even though I do like the fact that they offer those replaceable cutter heads. That is a nice feature because if you, if you ruin those, you're kind of asked out. I mean, yeah. you know, if you destroy that, you're just kind of, I mean, that's really, it really the whole just tool. It depends on the guy. Like if you are the person that, um, uses this thing every day, all, all day, all the time and you're, 
constantly cutting things with yep. those wire cutters and that's a concern to you, then, you know, that's going to be a bigger selling point. But I, Real quick. I personally, and you probably don't use, I, when I cut wire, I get get my wire cutters, you know, because yep. I don't know what I'm cutting and I need, right. I need to get 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 it done you know but um i'm gonna get weights on these real quick just to show the differences here so we'll start out with the sog switch plier so that's 6.30 ounces um the sog power lock that is 9.593 so that thing's a beast uh the charge and this is the charge al 8.305 and then the Victorinox 7.45 so um, just the tools themselves the Victorinox is is a little bit lighter about three quarters of an ounce lighter it's but interesting because it feels more substantial it does it absolutely does um, but let's uh, we'll go ahead and throw all this in here and we'll see you know if you were going to carry these two setups on your belt what would you be carrying here um so the leatherman sheath has a little spot for the bit kit and then the tool um the the leatherman sheath i do like the the options for carry here which are nice tear my scale out there all right so you're looking at 11.11 ounces with the leatherman with and bit kit and the victorinox oh 13.25 so the victorinox ratchet's worth it <laughs> yeah yeah the ratchet the Let's... ratchet puts it overboard uh but if compared to the old sog uh let's put it in the sheath because it's pretty heavy as well 11.65 so you know, definitely you got some weight here uh, with any of these. And, you know, if you add more bit kits or, you know, more bits and stuff to these things. Yeah, there it's, you know, it's variable. Yeah. But in my opinion, um, you know, in overall dimensions, they're pretty similar. Uh, the Victorinox is a little bit thicker uh, as a total package. But girl, you thick. <laughs> yeah, but they're pretty similar. Uh, Victoria Knox, the sheath is very nice. Um, you just you only have that one configuration for your belt, but I think that's the way you would want to carry this. Honestly, I don't think you'd want, really want to carry it in more of a scout carry setup. Um, I wouldn't carry it at all. I'd put it in my car. And... <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. Uh, but you do have you know nice um, compartments in here for each of the tools, uh, which is really nice and. And that's pretty cool. So hopefully you can see yeah, that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But tool for tool, without even without the accessories, just talking about the tools. And in this particular video, you know, yeah, we had the two SOGs, but it really comes down to these two. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's yeah, be honest. Yeah, yeah, There are some SOGs here, but, you yeah. know. Uh, and let's so, be honest. You know, Victorian Ox is a little longer, but significantly thinner. So... Uh, you know, if you were going to just carry this in your pocket, uh, the SOG, or the, I'm sorry, the Leatherman is a little over three quarters of an inch wide, uh, 0.766, and the Victorinox is just over a half inch, 0.559. So... That's uh, nice, too. Yeah. Having it thinner, you know, this thing, if you need to just take it with you and slide it in your pocket, uh, neither one of these have a pocket clip on the tool, although I do think you can get a pocket clip for the Leatherman. Um, I'm not aware of a pocket clip for the Victorinox, but uh, length, they're, the Victorinox is longer, so you're just over 4 inches, about 4.2 inches long. And the Leatherman is 3.9, uh, 3.91, actually. 3.9 or 1. Yeah, or four it's actually nine. right at 4. So I kind of slid into a low spot there. It's just over 4 inches. Uh, and then the Victorinox 
Yeah, it's 4.2. So, so two tenths of an inch longer, essentially, uh, but significantly thinner, uh, which I think is the more important measurement there on on this particular tool so yeah i think for uh maybe a little lady perspective mm -hmm. for sure that thinner matters yeah it matters hard. so now that we have this one laying here earlier you said this one was prettier is it still prettier um i like them equally you look, visually okay. okay yeah and maybe it's worth mentioning like you guys probably are like, oh, yeah, what does this lady know about tools and stuff? I actually know quite a bit about tools. So, you know. Yeah, she she's actually better <laughs> uh, better than your average uh, wife in that regard. Um, she actually managed a hardware store for many years. Uh, one thing I can say when it comes to visual stuff on the Victoria Knox, this thing is a fingerprint magnet. Yeah, I bet. Um, it's a polished, stonewashed finish on this guy uh, with a very, very nice polish. But I'm telling you, the fingerprints are just you Just have vicious. to keep a microfiber rag with you at all times. <laughs> yeah, but but other than that, it's it's very, very nice and super comfortable in hand. A uh, real nice positive engagement on the pliers. It's a nicer opening experience. Well, here, you do it. Because I don't um, think you've opened them. Access the pliers on both of them. Is uh, the... So, so that one you feel kind of snaps into yeah, place. Yeah. Now do it with the Leatherman. Is the metal on that uh, something that would tarnish at all? No. Oh. Um, I mean... So where this actually like cams over and it's a positive yeah. engagement where here you'll hear there was one and then yeah. there's the second one. That was pretty satisfying actually. The but, Leatherman just kind is, of is squishy and it just kind of goes well, until I mean, it doesn't move anymore. Yeah, it's it's nice and tight. So that's reassuring, but maybe falsely so. Um, whereas that y you can feel every engaging moment and that is not only satisfying, but reassuring. Yeah. I mean, it, I, you know, it's not that the Leatherman isn't terrible. Don't get no, me wrong. The, yeah, it's just, no, it's um, not terrible. you know, it, it's so much better than this. It's not even funny, but, but it's just not as nice of experience as this is, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, um, just I, that, that uh, the fact that I can't easily get this open with my fingers alone really bothers me. Yeah. And this one right here. I, you know, if you're, you're holding things, you're trying to get it, you know, you want to just quickly be able to yeah. open and get there. So anyway, guys, I know this is a crazy long video, um, but we were talking about four multi-tools. So at the end of this, um, here's what I got to say about all of it. If, if you guys are crazy enough to still be here watching this. Nobody's um, here. What are you talking about? Yeah. So, so here's what I have Except to say. Except for BJ, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Leatherman is a good tool. No doubt about that. And it's certainly worth the extra 50 bucks uh, or so over this SOG. Um, so if you're looking for a good quality multi-tool, uh, you know, this is where I would be looking. Either the Leatherman or the Victorinox. If you're, if you're wanting refinement in your multi-tool, Victorinox all the way. Do um, I, I really love the ratchet and the bit set here. I think it's much more useful than what you get with Leatherman. Um, and you just get more functionality here. Uh, but it's just a more refined tool. With all that being said, if the bit kit is not something that you care about and pliers is your, your jam, uh, the spring-loaded pliers here for 50 bucks I think is hard to beat. Uh, this is actually a pretty pretty solid tool and for the big huge price difference here I mean you know this is a hundred dollars more than this is uh, you also get a lot more over here mm -hmm. uh, but if if you're really mainly looking for pliers 
and you know you're looking for a pocket clip that kind of thing uh, that you want some pliers and occasionally uh, a separate tool. This one actually does do a decent job for Phillips screws only, uh, but that, that part's actually okay because it's centered and it's a full size number two Phillips. Uh, then I think the SOG switch plier is not a bad option. Mm -hmm. But for full size uh, multi-tool, um, I would just kick that one out of the way. <laughs> And, oh, no. and this would be where, where I, now both of these companies offer multiple different uh, configurations and different options and stuff. So, so don't, you know, don't just limit it to these two that I have here. Uh, understand that you can get, you know, slightly different arrangement with the accessories or, um, you know, a, a fully serrated and a plain edge blade over here or, you know, some different configurations over here. Uh, so both companies offer several different options, uh, but the overall feel of the tool, I have to give it to the Victoria Knox. I agreed. 100%, you agree? Actually, right. 149,000 percent. 149,000. So you really like this over this? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I just right. do. I, yeah, I mean, I there's no doubt. I I think it's a much I don't better hate tool. This, but yeah, yep. Like I said, the only thing that I can come up with that I really like about the Leatherman more than this setup is the changeable cutting heads. And even that, I'm just, I, I think more than anything, I just like the idea of that just in case I ever broke one. Right, yeah, it sounds um, great in theory, but like... Yeah, but have, I've never I've broke never one. Broke, yeah, I've yeah. never broke one before. <laughs> right, so, so. so I feel like I'm... I'm, I'm actually wanting or, or thinking about something that is a, really a non-issue. Um, so, so the Victoria Knox, that's the two thumbs up. Uh, yeah. So anyway, guys, hopefully you found this useful. If you're looking at multi-tools and you want to spend this much time watching this video, um, spend the, extra, spend the extra 20 or 30 bucks and get the Victoria Knox. You will not be disappointed. I promise you. Because this thing is a fantastic multi-tool. So Yeah, it seems pretty great. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we will catch you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.